Everybody, Infernape Shinjo here, and welcome back to the next episode of Let's Talk Anime. I'm back again with three new topics to discuss, so without any further ado, let's get into them. The first thing to discuss in today's video is Future Card Buddy Fight X. I do have some knowledge of the show before coming into this because I've been asked a couple of times to make fan made openings using songs from the show. So I do know a rough idea of it, but I was mostly blind before going into the first episode. So like I mentioned in other videos, I watched the first episode of Future Card Buddy Fight X and I'm going to give my thoughts on it. So the episode starts with Gao walking to school, of course being late like typical protagonists do, and he sees a group of kids that are being bullied by somebody and the bully is trying to take their cards. He basically single-handedly takes care of them and continues off to school. When he gets into school late, of course, he feels somebody trying to grab his leg from when he walks into the door, but when he reacts to it and everybody looks, there's nobody there. After school, Gao's talking with a couple of his friends and come to find out the person that was trying to grab Gao's leg earlier is a little baby chibi panda or as they call themselves, Saint Holy Sword Dragon. That's a crazy name if I've ever heard one. Saint Holy Sword Dragon explains that there's going to be a tournament happening between all of the universes and Gao is going to be representing one. All he needs is a buddy. So they go to Dragon World to try and find him one. When they get there, they find out that it was attacked previously and the creature that attacked it basically calls to Gao and says, hey, you should unlock this seal because I can't get out otherwise. Meanwhile, while all this is going on, somebody else comes in to attack and Gao basically has no choice but to release the seal. And he does, and the dragon that's released basically becomes his buddy because I think they made a deal or something like that. It's been a few weeks since I've watched the episode, so I'm a little bit rusty. But basically, after all this is taken care of, him and this other guy, Buddy Fight, which if you know more of Pokemon or Yu-Gi-Oh, they basically fight. And in typical card game fashion, Gao is on the edge of defeat, but he pulls it out anyway. And the dragon that was fighting by his side, Bots, becomes his buddy, and that's the end of episode one. The things that I liked about the episode is it's a very simple story to follow. I mean, with other shows that have that overarching theme with ten different things happening at once, it's just refreshing to see a show that doesn't really take itself that seriously and making a complex story, especially and the first episode of it. One other thing that I noticed, and this will probably be a good segue to mention it, I actually watched the dub of the first episode. Now I know that there's a lot of controversy of dub over sub, regardless of what the show is, but one thing that I do like that they threw in is they mentioned death at least a couple of times in the first episode. And from somebody that's watched Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh where in the original material they mentioned death and in the dub they don't even bother mentioning that. It's just cool how Buddy Fight does not shy away from bringing up the concept of death. Another thing that was cool was right before Gao and the dude duke it out in the first episode, one of Gao's friends basically makes his deck in real time. And that's a cool concept, especially from somebody that's watched Yu-Gi-Oh! I would have loved if that something like that would have happened in Yu-Gi-Oh! Like, somebody's about ready to duel and it's just like, okay, let me sit down and get my deck together. Because they don't even, they don't even cover deck construction in Yu-Gi-Oh! Maybe only like a couple of times, but that's about it. The final thing that I liked is that Gao can actually put up a fight to back up his talk. Like I mentioned at the start of the episode, some bullies are beating down on kids. Gao comes in and basically says, hey, you shouldn't do that. And the bullies are like, oh yeah, what are you going to do about it? And he actually stands up to him. He twists one of their arms and 
he's shown to actually have actual strength. While I was watching this episode, I couldn't help but compare Buddy Fight to Yu-Gi-Oh! Just because they both involve protagonists that are basically the center point of everything, and they both involve card games. The thing that I liked is that Gao can actually back up his talk, whereas with protagonists like Yuma at the start, he could definitely talk a big game, but when it came right down to it, he couldn't really do much, at least at the start of Zexel. Now, the cons about this first episode that I watched, it may sound weird that I'm bringing these up, but I want to at least be fair and give cons and pros because if I just say oh I absolutely love this there's no problem with this then it's not really a critique it's more of a just fanboying over it. The first thing is it seems overdone that this whole thing is going to be up oh, there's a tournament going on because I couldn't tell you how many anime that I watched where they just have to throw in a tournament off the top of my head my Hero Academia had one, which actually wasn't bad compared to other tournaments because they actually wrapped it up generally fast. And of course, now recently with Dragon Ball Super and the Tournament of Power. While I do like the idea of tournaments in general, it just seems like every anime has to do a tournament arc at least once to prove that they're an actual anime. That might be just my feeling, but that's what I'm sticking with. The second con that I have with the episode is that the fight in the second half of the episode was a little bit difficult for me to keep up with. Now, of course, it was only one half of the episode, so I can't really fault it for that much, but just for me personally, I would have liked to see a little bit more in depth on what the rules for the buddy fight are, but I guess that's how it is with card game anime. They don't really explain the rules that much in the show and they rather you go out and buy the cards yourself so you can learn how to play so I can't really fault it that much. Plus I'm sure that they probably had a lot more of an in-depth explanation to the game when Buddy Fight first started out. But overall I did actually enjoy the first episode of Future Card Buddy Fight X. Even though I do say that I won't be keeping up with any of the remaining episodes simply because there are too many for me to keep up with at this point. Especially since with a show like Buddy Fight they could literally have different incarnations of it and it could just keep on going on forever and about the time that I catch up they have this whole other show to cover. But with that discussion taken care of, let's get on to the second topic in today's video. And I am actually very excited to talk about this. The Yu-Gi-Oh! Vrains dub. Now, I'm not sure if it's actually pronounced Vrains or v Reigns or something like that because I know that there's some confusion on how Zexel was pronounced. Either the X is silent or the X isn't silent. But just to make this video a whole lot easier to comprehend, I will be calling it Vrains because that's what I've been calling it this whole time. A little bit of background before I get into it. They had a redub of the Pyramid of Light remastering scenes. I honestly couldn't tell much of a difference. They were going to have that in select theaters and they were also going to be showing clips of Yu-Gi-Oh! Vrains dubbed to, I guess, kind of give people incentive to go. Now, I didn't go myself because by the time that I figured it out, it was basically too late to get tickets. But fortunately for me, many people on the internet have posted clips about the dub from the theater. I really hope the fact that I just brought that up right now doesn't make those videos get taken down. But let's just pray that nothing like that happens. But what did happen with that theater showing is they had the remastered Pyramid of Light at the very start. And then at the end, they showed the very first episode of Yu-Gi-Oh! Vrains dubbed. And one night, probably about a couple of weeks ago now, I watched it. And it was a little bit difficult quality for me to understand that much because in a movie theater, the sound would bounce off a little bit difficult for me to hear. But I got the general gist of it. So before I get into the voice actors' performances, let me talk about confirmed changes from the Japanese to English. First one, Revolver's name is changed to Varus, Go's name is changed to Gore, 
and Kusanagi's name is changed to Coulter. So before I get into more in-depth discussion on Yu-Gi-Oh! Reigns' dub, I would highly recommend finding clips of Yu-Gi-Oh! Reigns' dub either on YouTube or other sources. It honestly won't be that hard to find, I can guarantee that, because somebody as simple as me found it. But if you've already seen the clips, or you don't mind me discussing something that you haven't watched, let's get right into this. The first thing that I liked about it is a lot of the voice actors are very, very appropriate for the character that they're supposed to be voicing. For example, Yusuka sounds like Yusei, which is very appropriate because people have seen parallels between the two shows. Now I feel like this might be a bit of an unpopular opinion, but I actually like Ignis's dub voice. It's very ignis -y, if that makes sense. The when you hear him in the Japanese version, you would imagine a voice exactly like the dub, if that makes any sense. Basically what I'm trying to get across is they pick the perfect voice actors for all of the characters. The second thing that I liked is there was an actual moment that I laughed out loud in the episode. I believe the scene that I'm thinking of is Ignis is trying to get away from the Knights of Hanoi and he says glitch. And I like that little touch because I feel like they did that to try and substitute for a swear word. It's kind of like he is swearing, at least in Ignis world or something like that. But I liked that. That was actually a moment that had me laughing. Another thing that I liked is they keep moments the way they're supposed to be. I'm sure with a lot of dub renditions of Yu-Gi-Oh, they take out moments that are supposed to be serious or rework moments that are supposed to be serious and make them a little bit more comical. But with Yu-Gi-Oh! of Reigns, for the first episode, they actually had serious moments stay in and they didn't try to make a joke out of it. The final thing that I liked from the Vrains' dub is the opening. Now, I haven't really heard much discussion on the opening because I guess I really haven't watched many people talk about it. I love the opening, even though there are no words in it at all. It's a cool song. It really brings me back to the days of the original Yu-Gi-Oh. The only thing I'm not keen on is that they kind of shafted Go because they don't show any clips of him, maybe like one or two, but that's still disappointing to me. Now, the things that I dislike about the Vrains' dub is, first thing, even though this version looks promising, it could just easily change by the time that they decide to redub it in episode one when it finally comes out. Now, that might be kind of a weird thing to bring up, but I remember back when the Mastermind of Mirage Pokemon came out and they had at least two or maybe three different versions of it. One where Ash was voiced by Casey Rogers and one where he was voiced by Sarah Notticheni. What I'm trying to get across is they could just as easily ditch all of this that I love from the first episode and change it into something different. I really hope that they don't do that, but anything can happen. Now the only other thing that I could find that I dislike from this is a couple of the name changes. Because personally I like the name Kusanagi for example and I wish they would have kept something like that in with the dub. But I guess Culture is a unique name as well. It'll probably get a lot of people to name their kids Culture as well so I guess that's a plus. Although, with all that being said, I do like the name Varus because it kind of just screams that he's about guns and bullets and stuff without having his name be Revolver like it is in the Japanese version. Because imagine 10 year olds watching the Vrains dub and somebody named Revolver comes on the scene. The kids will look around to their parents and say, Mommy, what's a revolver? That's going to be a talk with their kids and I'm kind of glad that I'm not there to see that. But those are all my thoughts on the Vrains dub. But the final thing that I'm going to talk about today is involving Xenoverse 2. Again, this time about an Infinite History DLC. Now, there will be a link in the description to the site that I got my information from, so you can check that out if you want. But from the site that I found, 
Infinite History is going to be a DLC for Xenoverse 2 or something to that effect and they're going to have new characters being Android 17, Jiren, Mastered Ultra Instinct Goku, and a new character called Fu. And my first thought with this is they didn't include Android 17 before? That's just kind of weird that they didn't because I would imagine Android 18 has probably already been included because, well, everybody loves Android 18. I mean, just look online if you want to, but don't because there are some dirty pictures on there. But I find it kind of weird how it took this long for Android 17 to be in the game because I'm assuming that Xenoverse 2 has been out for at least a while. And another thing is Fu. Now, I hope that I don't put my foot in my mouth when I say all this, but has Fu been a character before? Because he looks like the Supreme Kai from Universe 7, I believe? I think that's... I, I'm pretty sure I have that right, but feel free to correct me if I'm wrong. But has Fu been here before? I'm not sure. The person that recommended this to me said a new character, Fu, so I'm assuming that he's new. I like his design, and my only thought is maybe Fu is here to hype up everybody for the movie because Fu might play a part in it. I can honestly see that. That's just my opinion. And with that, that only leaves discussion on Jiren and Mastered Ultra Instinct Goku. Now, first of all, with Jiren, when you can play as him in Xenoverse 2, is he going to be overpowered like he is in the anime? Because if he is, you're going to see a whole lot of people running around running Jiren. The thing with Master Ultra Instinct Goku being here, all I can think is they are really milking the anime at this point. Because I believe that the only reason that Mastered Ultra Instinct Goku and Jiren are both in this DLC are probably because they're the last two fighters in the Tournament of Power, which is actually over now that I think about it by the time that this video is out. Well, actually, they're not the last two fighters. I forgot. My mistake. I'm sure that somebody's already corrected me in the comment section, but it's okay. I don't know, I'm kind of half and half on it. Again, I don't play the games myself, so I'm kind of just a bystander watching from the background, so that's my thoughts on it. But that is going to wrap up today's video of Let's Talk Anime. Make sure to mock punch that like button if you enjoyed. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of my other videos. Until then, this is Infinite Shinjo, and I'm signing out. Have an awesome day, everybody.